welcome my friends once again to our channel uh, today we are looking at soaps and detergents and majorly we shall be looking at how soap works in the previous sessions we have been looking at how to make bar soap we have been looking at how to make uh, liquid soap how to make different detergents uh, now able to make bath soap like this one We're able to make liquid soap like this but now the question is do you know how soap works do you know how stains get off from a cloth how stains get off from a surface that's what we shall be looking at in this video uh, for those who have not yet subscribed to our channel please make sure you click on uh, you click on that subscription button and also click on notification button so that whenever we share something you are able to get it as fast as possible and also we have this contact here you can whatsapp you can send a message uh, if there is any inquiry about how to make soap or anything about what we have shared on our channel so today we are looking at soap and in the previous sessions, we say that soap majorly comes from the reaction between a fat or oil reacting with sodium hydroxide, what we call lye, or potassium hydroxide to form soap and glycer. And before you understand what, how soap works, we need to first know the structure of soap. And here is the structure of soap. When you look at this, is the structure of soap, and we say that soap comes from carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acid reacting with this carboxylic acid in the oils and the fatty the fats from animals and reacting with sodium hydroxide. So whenever they react, they form a structure like this. And we say that chemical name of soap is known as sodium stearate now the structure of soap has two parts you can see is the one we are calling the alkali group alkali group is the one which consists of only carbon and hydrogen now i'm not saying that soap has only these carbon atoms it is a long chain of alkali group a long chain of carbon and to hydrogen atoms but for the case of our lesson we are just posing it at this to give us just a structure but it is a long chain but this one gives us a clear structure of what soap is the molecule of soap so this side we have alkali group and then here we're having a carboxyl group when you check here we have the carboxyl group but one hydrogen is not there it has been displaced by sodium so here we have sodium ion from the alkali the alkali is here the one we are talking about sodium hydroxide then we have this group which is coming from the fatty acid so this group is the one we are calling stellate from the fatty acid then this ion is sodium ion from the alkali now when we join them together they form what we call sodium stellate okay now in simple terms without using those carbon to hydrogen we can just use this now each corner each corner the first each corner there is a carbon atom a carbon atom a carbon atom so this is another way we can draw the structure of soap so we saw in here that the first side is alkali group and the last head here up here we have the iron it is the iron is the iron for sodium and iron on oxygen and here we're going to see that this area is given a name soap molecule has two parts the one part is the one we call the hydrophilic group which is the one with the charges and then this one is which we're calling alkali group the one we call the hydrophobic group now, we have different characteristics the characteristics 
of these groups. For example, the hydrophilic. Hydrophilic comes from the two words. Hydra, which means water. Philia, which means loving. So hydrophilic part is water loving. While hydrophobic, it is comes from two words. Hydro, which is water. Phobia, which is hating. And therefore, this part, it is known as water hating. So I think that the hydrophilic part, it is negatively charged. It has some negative charge and positive charges. And we are saying it is also known as polar. polar. It is polar and it is hydrophilic head. We give it our name, hydrophilic head. Then here we are here we are saying that it is non-polar. It is not water loving. It does not dissolve in water. So we say it is non-polar and we are calling it hydrophobic tail. So in the structure of soap, we have been able to see two things. That soap molecule, it has one part which is water hating which is hydrophobic part, and then you have another part which is water loving, and it's called hydrophilic part. Hydrophilic part is also known as the ionic part, and then this hydrophobic part is also known as non-polar part, because it does not dissolve in water, while hydrophilic part, for it, it is water loving, it can dissolve in water. Okay. Now, let's go to the cleansing action of soap. There is an NAB before we start. It is saying that most of the dirt, that most of the dirt is oily in nature. And oil does not dissolve in water. We know very well that oil and water are known as immiscible liquids. They are called immiscible, meaning that they are not compatible. They cannot mix. They form layers. So, the molecule of soap have sodium or potassium salts of long chain carboxylic acid. We have seen that one in the what? In the structure. Now, in the case of soaps, what happens? The carbonate chain or hydrophobic tail is the one which dissolves in oil or is the one which dissolves in the dirt and the ionic or hydrophilic head is the one which dissolves in water so here we have a sample of a t-shirt here it is having this dirt here all these are stains of dirt even here we are seeing another stain of dirt we are saying that most of this dirt is oily in nature and soap i mean uh, water and oil they are not compatible so for water and oil that's why we have like a cloth when you put it in water alone it may never get clean but you add some soap it will become clean why that's the cleansing action that you want to look at what happens number one so when we add soap in water, soap dissolves in water and it lowers the surface tension of water. This helps to wet the clothes or the surface better. So this is what happens. We have soap being put in water and then what happens? The surface tension of water because the soap is dissolving in water. So when it dissolves in water, the surface tension, it also decreases. So when it decreases, what happens? This we go to step two. The soap molecule, if you call very well from the structure of soap, soap molecule has a hydrophilic, which is water having or water attracting head, and hydrophobic, which is water repelling tail. So in water, the soap molecule arrange themselves into tiny spherical structures, the one we call micelles, which is the hydrophobic tail pointing inward 
and hydrophilic head outward. It is demonstrated here. When we see sodium ion, it is our head, I believe you call very well, hydrophilic part. Then down here where we see the tail is where we have hydrophobic part. So when soap molecules go into the water, they collect themselves in that manner. And after that, they form a structure we call the micelle. Micelle, when it forms, when you see that, because these tails are oil-loving or dirt-loving, they have gone towards the dirt. You check here. This is the dirt particle. They are saying dirt particle, oil or please. So they come near. near. They are tails, they come near. They are attracted towards. Then the head, for them, they face towards the what? The water. So this physical thing formed is what we call the micelles, where there are soap molecules, the tails are touching to the dirt, and then the head is towards facing towards the water. So what happens next? Step three. So in step three, the hydrophobic tail attached to the dirt or oil or grease particles, breaking them. So it starts to break them away from the surface. So you can see the red is indicating the positive charge. The minor, the black is indicating the tail. So the tail is attached to the dirt. The head is attached to the water. So when it comes there, it starts to break it, breaking it off from the surface. And then step four, the soap molecules surround the dirt or grease, breaking it into smaller droplets and suspending them in the water. So at this point, because when it breaks into smaller pieces, so they keep on surrounding it until when it becomes very smaller particle and then it becomes suspended in water. That is the stage you call the emulsion stage. And finally, when you rinse, you call that we have broken them into smaller particles. So when you rinse, when rinsed with water, the suspended dirt or grease and grease along with soap molecules are washed away, leaving the surface clean or leaving the cloth clean. We can see our t-shirt, which was very dirty, but the stains are no longer there. Why? The soap has worked on it with water and now it is very clean. So the removal of stain, now we have the clean fabric. You can see this one which was attached here, it was attached. So when you keep on breaking two smaller particles at the end of it, all, the, it moves with the dirt and the water molecule, they are washed off with linsing. So those are the five stages that we follow when the cleans are, uh, that is how water, uh, soap works in only the five stages. We have summarized it all in only one paragraph. Summary of cleansing action of soap. What are we saying? That soap dissolves in water and forms micelles. Then the hydrophobic tails of soap molecules attached to the dirt and the grease, breaking them into smaller droplets. Mm -hmm. These droplets are then emulsified and suspended in water. Finally, rinsing with water washes away the dirt, leaving the surface clean. That is the cleansing action of soap, which I have summarized in only two paragraphs. I believe you have learned something on how uh, soap works. Please uh, don't forget to like and comment and share and also subscribe if you are watching and you have not yet subscribed please subscribe for more so that you can always get the notifications for the upcoming uh, tutorials for upcoming videos i'll be waiting for you as you continue to look at the structure of soapless detergent in this session we have looked at structure of soap detergent and in our next session, we shall also be continuing to look at 
the structure of suppressed detergent and how different is a suppressed detergent from a soapy detergent. Don't forget to call or WhatsApp on this number if there's any inquiry on what you have been sharing. Otherwise, jobless.